wait for the fall semester of this year. So today we will be hosting former Indianapolis Colts player and Los Angeles Rams player, Aaron Sean Harper. So he has an enormous amount of experience in the NFL business as well. He's a, a well-established leader. He is a very confident leader. He will walk through all parts of life that you need to take and that you need to learn the things to walk those um, parts of life and become successful in every single avenue that life will give, um, that life will throw at you. So moving on, we need to introduce ourselves as the facilitators. So we are the future business leaders of America business up here at Berkeley Community College. I'm sure a lot of you are from different colleges, from Montclair State University, from Stevens Institute of Technology or Rutgers University or whatever you may be. We're very glad that you can join us today for this extremely, extremely interesting meeting. And we hope you enjoy what Sean Harper has to offer for you. So my name is Damian. We have here our professor and advisor, Albert Kupel. Say hi, professor. How you doing, everyone? We also have our vice president for FBLA, Omar Crawford. You can say hello to Omar. How's it going, guys? And we also have our secretary, Swani Murillo. So you can go ahead, Swani, and say hi. Hi, how are you guys? Moving on, we have our marketing manager, which is Jacob K. Metlian. You can go ahead, Jacob. Hi, guys. How are you? And we have Stefan Pico, which is our second secretary. So you can say hi, Steph. Hi, everyone. Welcome. So my name is Damian Deanoski, and I'm the president of FBLA. And it is of great honor to be hosting Aaron Schaffer today. Um, moving on, you will now hear from Professor Albert Kupo, who will tell you who we are and exactly what so you can go ahead, Professor. Good afternoon, everyone, and I want to welcome everyone to this uh, most prestigious event where we're going to discover my favorite type of leadership about winning, transformational attitude, and just being a part of something bigger. And here at Bergen, I've tried to instill that in anyone who's ever taken my class, and you know I'm all about educating you on the business practices and leadership from money management to treating people with respect, customer service, and just being an overall good person in the workplace. And that was always my goal, to rub off that type of mentality on you and in life. And with that, uh, we, we wanted to have someone that enveloped that type of mentality. And before we introduce Sean, let, I just want to do a recap on what we do as an organization. Our job is to teach you and gain knowledge as an entrepreneur to give you the spirit of business from not only a winning mentality, that fundamental knowledge that you need to succeed in the real world. We help people understand credit, understand how to rent a home. We make people, we, we allow you to understand how to uh, enhance your resume skills and build your interview skills for the real world. And FBLA is not just an organization at Bergen, but it is a movement. And I appreciate the people who have come from Stevens Institute FBLA and Montclair FBLA or Montclair Marketing Club to come support our cause. The showcase that we have is. Uh, in, in, is our educational field of range. We Every month we do technology, we have a technology month, we have environmental month, we talk about current events from anywhere from the election to, uh, you know, the, the virus, but we try to make a positive out of it to teach people how to make something good out of something that may be unfortunate. And we've done so many things to involve the, our student population. Unfortunately, we couldn't go on a lot of field trips. Last last uh, year we went to um, the, the, the New York, the Treasury, and it was an amazing experience. And we've done student competitions. We've done um, virtual field trips to Google even during these times. And I, we, we've even went to see IBM at one point and we missed doing that. So we decided to take it to a virtual platform and showcase one individual that we found to be most inspirational and held true to our values. And I wanted to turn this back over to give a proper introduction to Mr. Aaron Sean Harper, former player of the LA Rams and Indianapolis Colts. Thank you. If I'm ready. We just need to finish up. We will be okay. starting in five minutes. Okay. So as <laughs> Professor Kupel said, we are very honored to be hosting 
Aaron Sean Harper, which is a former who is a former NFL player for the Indianapolis Colts and Los Angeles Rams. But before we move on to um, Sean Harper, we need to introduce you to ourselves today. Firstly, so this is the number one fact about the FBLA club, which is a state organization, not state. Actually, it is a national organization throughout the whole of the United States that is separated in four different parts. And the number one fact about FBLA that you can find anywhere is that we are the largest career student organization in the world. So what that means is if you want a job, want to learn about leadership in college, if you want to become the leader that you strive to be by making the money right here, right now, you join your local FBLA at your university or at your college. We do not skip any single step. We only go for winning and we embody everything that Sean Harper embodies, winning and making money and making friends and building a strong bond for the future. That is how leadership is built and that is how you become a leader of your whole team and that is how you become friends and that is how you network. So moving on to that. If you want to join us for a following meetings every single Thursday, except for next Thanksgiving, so our final meeting is on December the 17th, but we meet every single Thursday from 3.15 to 4.30 p.m. Eastern time in the United States. And for the link for our meetings, it is the same exact link that you use to enter this meeting, but you can also join the meeting by clicking the chat in the, by clicking the link in the chat down below, which will be posted very soon now. So if you want to check us out for any subsequent meetings, you can click the chat and copy the link, save it in your, save it in your um, notepad, save it in Word. Be sure to save it anywhere and then to be able to access it and go into our meetings every single Thursday. And before we start, we have to give a big shout out to both of our partners for this event. So be sure to check out and do not miss out on anything that Montclair State Marketing Club do and Steven Institute of Technology FBLA do. These organizations are amazing. They have helped us in promoting the event and getting you guys the information that you need and getting the, I have someone in the chat. Of course, we will update you on that. They, they also, as well, Montclair State Marketing Club and Stevens Institute of Technology, FBLA, they also hold events on their organizational um, links. So if you want to check them out, you should click in the chat for MSMC, the link to their Instagram, and for Stevens Institute of Technology, the link to their duck link, where you can contact them through email. MSMC has a very large following on Instagram. It's a, follow them on Instagram and support them with their platform because they support it for us. And be sure to check out Stevens Institute of Technology, FBLA, and join their mm -hmm. all of their meetings to see what's going on and to see that Stevens Institute of Technology has a great view outside of their university, but an even better pathway for you to become an entrepreneur. And before we move on, before Sean can present to all of you, be sure to check out Sean Harper's free ebook by clicking on the link in the, um, in the chat down below, which will be posted very shortly. And be sure to download basically priceless piece of knowledge that Sean has written, and you will be the leader that he tries to be. You will repeat a lot, basically, throughout this meeting that Sean Harper will tell you. But the way that it really will stick is if you download this ebook. And then you can write it on your notes, write it um, in your phone even. And you can remember every single thing that Sean said to you. And you can, and you can move on with your strides towards leadership and becoming the leader that your team wants you to be. So without further ado, Sean Harper, the floor is yours. <laughs> can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can. Awesome. Yes, well, sir. You know, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Sean Harper. As I mentioned, played seven years professional football uh, with the Rams, with the Colts. I had a wonderful time playing. Uh, been, I blocked for some great running backs and quarterbacks and, you know, guys like Cleveland, Gary, Jerome Bettis, Marshall Falk, Trent Green, the list goes on and on. But, you know, most people think that, you know, you're playing in the NFL, Sean, you know, you're successful on so many levels and, you know, you've won the game on 
so many levels and you know you must have had a great track you know great you know education you know outstanding athlete let me tell you something everything could be further from the truth and i really i really need you to understand and grasp what i'm going to share with you today because it is life changing if you can take just just a quarter of this information and apply it to what you already know in your network the sky will be the limit for you no greater blessing of the Lord is to give and to invest because it doesn't come to you if it can't get through you. Or oh, it can come, but it won't stay with you. Okay, that's a law. Now, I'll be honest, I break a ton of laws. I mean, you know, just, you know, do this and what's, you know, what's normal practice and what's best practice. And, you know, I mean, I just, I throw half that stuff out the window. Let me give you an example. You know, they're like, you know, well, you know, 98% uh, of all businesses or 90% of all businesses fail within the first five years of starting up. And yet everyone is listening to the same information, what to do and how to open your company and run it. After a while, you begin to take a step back. You know, maybe what they're telling me might not be the whole truth. It could be a part of the truth, but it might not be the whole truth. So I'm going to share some laws and some and and and, and some concepts with you you today that will change your life this is such a blessing for me and it will be an amazing blessing for you i remember standing in the second grade line first day of school in the second grade man i'm so excited to be in the second grade my friends are with me and uh the teacher's looking at me she's not saying much she just keeps looking at me my first grade teacher from last year and she walks over with the principal and she grabs my left hand, my left arm actually, and she pulls me back into the first grade line. And all my friends that were with me uh, from the second grade, now they're looking at me as I look at them from the first grade line. And they're looking at me and I'm looking at them and finally one of them yells. He says, Sean, you failed. You failed the first grade. You must not have made great grades. So Sean, you're stupid, you're dumb. And I heard this every single day. That's the dumb kid. That's the stupid kid as I look around. And now I'm much bigger than all my new first grade friends. And I'm so embarrassed. And I want to hang out with the second graders, but they don't want to be around. You know, that rejection hurts. And I struggled, man. I struggled from the first grade to the fifth grade. And by the time I was in the fifth grade, um, I'm struggling in class. And, and finally, the teacher, I guess she had mercy or grace or whatever. She uh, says, you know, Sean, I'm going to have someone test you. And they begin to test me for three or four days. And at the end of the test, the, the psychiatrist says, we need to speak to your mom immediately. And they're like, ma'am, your son has four to five documented learning disabilities. He is struggling in this area, this area, this area, this area. Just, and, and it was just sad because I watched my mom's face as she begins to you know, grow concerned and then angry, then sad, and just such a ray and a mosaic of emotions. Finally, she stands up about five or 10 minutes into the conversation. She slams her right hand on the table, boom! She said, you will not label my son. Now, let me just have a, a moment, an ADD moment for a second. Let me talk about labeling. Labeling is basically a protective mechanism, but it's so detrimental and dangerous if you allow a negative label to be placed on you because you can never grow past your name. Always remember that. The little jokes, people, oh, you're this or you're that. If it's not a positive label, you break it right now because you can't grow past that. It will always hinder your growth. That's why I don't use the term small business. I use the term emerging business. Well, you have a small business. No, I have an emerging business and I've been emerging for the past 20 years. Back to the story. I struggled from that moment on. I kept actually struggling and uh, I was kicked out of two schools for disciplinary issues. And I left high school, uh, college students. I, I left high school with a 1.62 accumulative GPA, not on my ACT. I stuttered my entire life. I could not complete a sentence till college. Students or teachers would ask me questions and I would st st stutter over the words and they would start laughing. And I just kept fighting and plowing through that. And I get a phone call. From a junior college, a two year school in Mason City, Iowa. And the phone conversation goes just like this Sean, we're going to bring you up to Mason City, Iowa to play football. No scholarship for you, but we're going to just invite you up to the cornfields of Mason City, Iowa 
to play football. I'm like, no thanks. No thanks. As I hung the phone up, I felt something that I've never felt before, man. That dream, that dream began to speak. Football, change life. You can do it. And I called the coach back. I said, coach, if you have me, I'll come. You know what? I went up to the cornfields of Mason City, Iowa. In the first year at that junior college, I sat the bench the entire season, not one play. And I was doing horrible in school. And I picked up the phone and I called my mom. I said, Mom, I quit. Has anyone ever felt like that before? Quietly and uh, discreetly, you can raise your hand to yourself. Everyone feels like that. But it's one thing to feel that way. And it's another for to allow your feelings to become a state of being. And at the end of that first year, that junior college, not stepping on the field, barely playing, uh, I mean, studying, trying to make it. I had a conversation with myself, and this is the conversation. Sean, there's no way that you can become successful. Because according to the world, you don't have the education, you don't have the network. You're not born on the right side of the tracks because we were poor. My mom raised all seven of us by herself in one house, by herself, single parent. But something else clicked. I said, but you know, I can win. And if life is a game, I'm going to play the game to win. And once I made the switch, it's like something activated within me. Now I'm going to sell you on the whole concept of winning above success. See, you're not created to become successful. You're created to win. See, success is a man-made construct. Understand this, okay? You guys are up in the East Coast, uh, up East, and I'm going to use this example. If I had $7 million and I lived in Manhattan, I'm doing pretty good, right? If I have $7 million and I live in the middle of a, you know, maybe Mississippi or an area where it's more economic depressed, I'm doing very well. And if I had $7 million and I lived in Dubai, I'm average, if not poor. Now, why is it that $7 million can mean so much in one area, but doesn't mean nothing in another area? It's because somebody is defining what your success is, but no one can define what your win is. See, winning is the fullest expression of who you are mentally, socially, spiritually, physically, and most important, legacy. That is what your win is. Your win is a fixed destination. And so that's great news, great news for some of us because you don't have to win all four quarters to win the game, baby. Think about this for a second. Why is it that football is a multi-billion dollar industry? That they're playing football right now in the midst of COVID-19 and millions of people are watching. So let's say that I'm thinking about East, East Coast again, East, East. Let's just say New York. Let's say that the New York Jets won every single game. For the next five years, the New York Jets won every single game. You could not find a ticket to that game. No one would have tickets. Only the elite and the wealthy and the connected would have tickets to that game. Now, let's say the New York Jets lost every single game for the next five years. I could walk right into that stadium and sit down. Why? Is it that there's no fans? Of course there's fans. But DNA-wise, you, you connect with winning. You don't connect with success. Gaming. I know there's some gamers there. My son's a gamer. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. Now, if you really pay attention to a game, chances are you will never win the game, but you will spend all day playing that game in order to win a game that you most likely, 1% of people would ever finish a game. You're not going to finish the game, but you're, but you're addicted to it. Why? Because your body is addicted to it. Why? Because your body is built upon winning. That's why you have goals. That's why you have a dopamine release, because it's predicated off of winning. You are one, the two to three million sperm cells that fertilize the egg. You're the one that fought through the traffic. You're the one that fought through all the rest of them, a couple million of them, and you won. So that's a part of your makeup. It's a part of your DNA. So when I said, I'm going to win this game of life, it connected with the essence of who I am. 
And so now I'm moving as a winner. Let me explain to you what happened after that. I go back that next year. Actually, I went back early. I went back in May. And I begin to practice every day, twice a day. When all the other players are at home eating spaghetti with mama and daddy, I'm practicing twice a day. I went from sitting on the bench to the Junior College Hall of Fame in one season. I went from not playing a snap to a full scholarship to Big Ten University, Indiana University, IU Bloomington, one year. And I go off to that junior cut, uh, and then I go off to Indiana, and I start the process all over again. I was redshirted. They're laughing at me, and I kept grinding and grinding and doing what winners do. Winners do what people aren't willing to do. Winners do what people won't do. Winners always operate in the 212. What do I mean by that? Water boils at 211 degrees. At 212 degrees, water boils. And boiling water has changed the world. Everyone that's listening to me, you have the potential to operate in the 212. But most of us don't, unless we have a coach or someone to push us into the 212. Baby, I was so mad, I was so angry, I was living in the 212. I went from junior college to Indiana University. Now I'm blocking for a Heisman candidate. Now I'm third pick in the fourth round. I stuttered my entire life. Now I'm talking to you now as a national and international motivational speaker. I've been a business owner for, for since 2000, actually 1998, but uh, 2004, I took it over myself and I've been grinding. That's close to 20 years of experience. Why? F because of success models. Yes, I use some, but, I, but it's more of the win model. And the great thing about winning, the other great thing is that there's always, there's always a way to win. I'm playing a game with my son. We're playing Star Wars Battlefront a couple of years back, right? And we're playing, man, and we're playing, and we get to level 12, right? And we're keeping, man. We're getting beat every day. So every day I come home from 4 to 4.45, me and my son, we play. I'm kind of bond with him, right? We're bonding. And I'm playing with him, and, we, and we're losing. One day, as I'm going through the drills and I'm being chased by stormtroopers, I jump behind this barrel, right? And I notice the guys can't see me. <laughs> I'm like, they can't see me. And then I'm like, Caleb, run past here and they'll chase you and I'll shoot them all. Pow, 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 right? And, I, and it worked. It worked on 12, 13, 14, and 15. All it worked. And then my son looks at me after we cleared the level. He said, Daddy, there's a glitch in the game. And I promise you, I almost broke the controller. I said, no, son, it's not a glitch. In order for them to call it a game legally, uh, uh, um, um, ethically, they have to put a way to win in there. And, and now they can call it a game. We just found a way to win. And I looked at my son. I said, there's always a way to win. So I'm going to share with you after Leaving high school, the 1.62 accumulative GPA had to, to go into IU Bloomington, leaving with a you know, double major in postgrad studies. I'm going to share with you, after stuttering my entire life, becoming a motivational speaker, after being in business, multi-businesses for, for over 20 years, I'm going to share with you some secrets, some tips, some strategies. And I need for you really, really to listen to what I'm sharing because you might not read this in your books. You might not see this on the internet, but the proof is in the pudding. I'm still here and I'm still grinding and I'm still winning. Now I will get knocked down, I will have setbacks, but you know what? My game is to win and after this, so will you. So we're talking about leadership, okay? And I'm gonna share with you some techniques and strategies and concepts that I've used in leadership that has helped me. The first thing is, it's very uncommon, but I, I always focus, I always focus on my identity. Now, why, why in the world would you say that? I told you it was gonna be a little bit different, right? I'm talking about my identity and this is why, because as a leader, as, as someone, he or she that has taken the helm, there is so much pressure 
for you to reform. There's so much pressure for you to conform. There's so much pressure and it takes courage. And sometimes you'll second guess yourself, but it takes courage. And sometimes, oftentimes you'll doubt yourself, but it takes courage. And when it's all said and done, when everyone else is gone and you're sitting at the chair, did I make the right decision? Oh, I made the wrong decision. Oh, I'm a bad person. You gotta stop it right there because what you do is not who you are. And you have to always build up your self-concept. See, all actions stem from thoughts. All thoughts come from beliefs, and your belief is nestled in what's called your self-concept. A guy named Maxwell Marx wrote an amazing book called Psycho-Cybernetics in the late 50s and 60s. You may laugh, but most speakers pull their information from people like John Maxwell, Maxwell Marx, people like... Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People, people like Napoleon Hill. They pull all that information and motivational material from these guys. So don't laugh, okay? Maxwell Malt, Psycho-Cybernetics. Get the book. He's talking about your self-concept. So that is something that you have to protect every single day. Because oftentimes, if you, if you get too in to weigh down and the stress gets you and now your actions become your identity. Now you're living life from an external perspective. Now, sooner or later, you're allowing the external to dictate the internal. So the self-concept, you have to always build up. I like myself. I'm amazing. I'm powerful. I'm a winner. You got to say it 50 times in the mirror in the morning. Then you do that. You have to become your number one fan. You have to become your number one fan. Because when the pressure mounts and you doubt yourself, you have to hear your voice to lift yourself back up. It is so dangerous to listen to the applause. It is so dangerous to listen to the praise of people. And it's just as equally dangerous to listen to the criticisms of people. So you take the criticism and you learn a little bit and then you step back to the middle. You take to the left, you receive the praises and the pats on the back, and then you step back to the middle because the same people who are praising you will be the same people that will yell crucify. So you have to develop an internal a well that you can pull from and no matter what happens. I love who I am and I appreciate who I've been created to be. So I have my son and he's walking over here. He knows what I'm going to do, right? Um, I kind of put this in him years ago. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. I put this in him years ago. Put the camera down. Come here. Okay. So he's like 18 years old. He's tired of me. Be quiet. <laughs> and so um, when my wife was pregnant and Caleb was coming through, I would speak to him every single day. And I would give a phrase or a sentence. This is who you are. After he said, mama and dada, I taught him this phrase and I made him say it for years. And this is who you are, son. And he said it over his life every single day. You ready? Go for it. Say it loud. I'm a world changer. I'm a child of God. I'm a leader. Leaders always look at what they're going to and not what they're going through. Every day. The world has now lost the ability to name my son. I took it from him. Go. He's my film guy. He's setting up right now. He's doing a great job. Yeah, so you have to fight. You have to fight for that. That means that the selfies don't define who you are. Your, your Instagram likes don't determine your popularity. People who are accepting you, it does not. Listen, because if that happens, leading to the next point, then you're not able to make sound decisions. You're making people decisions instead of the right decisions. And as a leader, you have to be willing to walk alone. You have to be willing to step alone. You have to be willing to stand alone. In other words, you become the thermostat, not the thermometer. That takes courage. So you have to build that up every single day. Now, uh, I have a list of notes here. <laughs> but um, Oh, once that happens, when you are programming who you are and you believing in yourself, whew, then as a leader, you become the greatest salesperson in your, in your organization. You are the greatest salesman or the greatest saleswoman because your job is to sell vision. You sell the vision. 
in every sentence. You sell the vision to your people who you work with, people who are looking up to you. You're selling the vision. You're selling the vision. But here's the caveat. Here's the challenge. Before they buy into the vision, they have to buy into you. So if you're not full, wholehearted, 100% in it, if you're not all in, they can pick that up as a divided spirit. Let me tell you what that does. Because now, you know, you're trying to sell this and you're selling that and people aren't putting 100% in. People are, you know, goofing off. There's kind of some division in your group. Oftentimes what happens is that you don't attract what you want. You attract who you are. And if there's division in you, if there's uncertainty in you, if there's a lack of confidence in you, eventually it an exude or it ooze out to your team. So this is why you have to once again, you know, I have tons of leadership strategies and tactics and, you know, but, but this is where a lot of people miss it. You know, we, we focus on the application of winning or success, but we don't focus on the individual. This is why cer certain people are great leaders just naturally and other people struggle because it's in here before it's in here. So you now, have to be the salesperson and you sell the vision. Listen, I was in Texas three days ago, sitting at a table with a very, very, very influential and successful man. And he was pitching me to the right was an individual on his team to the left was an individual on his team. I'm watching him, but I'm listening to the other people. I'm listening to body language. Over 80% of all communication is nonverbal. So I'm watching them and they are so excited. And their eyes are gleaming. I'm like, I'm in. Why? Because as the leader, if you can sell people around you, then you believe it. That's agreement. I said, yeah. Now, Hattie was speaking to some great things, and their assistants are like, I'm just taking notes. I'm like, oh, I got a problem. They're not in it. That means you ain't sold them. If you can't sell the people closer to you, you sure can't sell me. Then I joined. Just like that. I'm in. That's huge. You are the greatest salesperson. You are always promoting the vision. You are always promoting where you want to go. Now, here is the next challenge. I'm just oozing or just leading outward. Who are you talking to? I'll ask that question again. Who are you talking to? Transparent moment. One of my biggest struggles from leaving the NFL to going to corporate America was that it was a different mindset. It's a different mentality. See, in the NFL, everyone's like, you know, type A, D on the disc, man. We're like, let's go. You know, let's, let's handle it. Let's, let's win. Aggressive, type A personalities. Like, boom, 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 you know, take it. Corporate America is totally different. It's a different animal altogether. So I'm like, raw, let's go, four quarters. And they're like... I need a mental break. I'm like, no, no mental break. Let's go. Let's win. Let's take it. Yeah. No, that's not how we operate in corporate. I'm like, okay, wait a second. So let me tell you what helped me out. Because there's no use of me selling and having all this information if they can't receive it. So I had to understand and learn who I was talking to. And I'm not really going to go into it. I'm going to let you guys, I mean, there's tons of teachings out there about this. But there's four distinct temperaments, not personalities, temperaments. Personality kind of is what you become. A temperament is who you are. This is the core, the crux of who you are. There's four distinct temperaments. And so I had to learn how to talk to each temperament differently. If there's a temperament like mine, I'm coming in for the win. This is a temperament, a temperament like most educators, and I have to be, you know, put together, nice, structured. Use words like best practice and efficient, timely, manner, on time, orderly, things like that. So each temperament's different. I've learned how to read a temperament in five seconds. And I speak their language. I become them. I come to their level in order to raise up. Sometimes leaders, you can stand up and be the leader outside of the speech and a couple other directives. You always, you always Go to the level that the person that you're talking to, to raise them up, to lift them up, to build them up, to encourage. Sometimes that's in front. Oftentimes that's behind. You get behind and you push and you elevate and you encourage. You build. You're a builder.
speaking of that, another, another secret to leadership that's not talked about is once you build people up to create effective teams. It's all about teamwork. And we talk about, and one of the struggles is that we talk about teamwork in the context of success. And that's tough because success is so ambiguous. Now try talking about winning or, or teamwork in the context of winning. People can flow with that a lot better. That's a challenge for you, but here I go. I'm now, and I'm, and I'm learning this now as we speak, how to build powerful teams because I realize that we cannot do it alone. It is, it is so amazing to me that our educational system, they don't teach teamwork. Think about it. We don't teach teamwork. The only time you get to the collaborative stage often is when you go for your master's degree. Then they bring everybody together and you have to work and you have to collaborate to get a grade, you know? But the teamwork aspect of it is all individualized. But winners, you have to have a team. So I'm going to throw some, I'm going to throw some names to, you know, kind of prove my point because I'm saying some controversial uh, things that might not be taught every day, but teamwork is essential. Building teams, it is so important and being able to, and to know how to build a team. So I'll give you an example. When you think of Facebook, you think of Mark Zuckerberg, right? Okay. I'll, I need you to Google the founders of Facebook. I think there's like nine of them. It's a team. When you think of Bill Gates, one of the richest men in the world, you don't think of his partner, his teammate, Paul Allen. Warren Buffett had a teammate. His name was Charlie. And Charlie has been with him for the last 40 to 50 years, 40, 50 years. At every meeting, Charlie sits to the left. No one knows about that. Think about that. Hey, music. Paul Simon, for you older people, Paul Simon, Art Garfunkel, that's a team. Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, that's a team. In fact, the founder of our country, one of the founders, George Washington, we all talk about George Washington. Listen, I went to, Nat I went to the Arlington Cemetery, and I'm looking around at all these big tombs, and I see this huge tomb almost the size of a small womb. I'm like, who is this guy? Van Buren, wherever, look this guy up. George Washington had a great vision, but he couldn't organize his troops. So he had to bring over a Persian officer from out of the United States. And he came in and he organized George Washington's troops or we would have lost the war. That's a team. You have strengths and you have weaknesses. The secret is to focus on your strength and to partner up. And if you got enough money, staff your weaknesses. You have to have a team. And now that you have your team, you have to build what's called your corporate culture. <sighs> Listen, a great team, a great person is like a seed, has all the potential. But if you put the seed in the wrong environment or in the wrong soil, it will not grow. If you put your seed in a toxic, toxic culture environment, if the pH is off, it's not going to grow. The seed's not going to grow. It'll grow this big versus this big. Think of Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs is Apple, right? Steve Jobs, he was running Apple, and his board fired him. Then look it up. His board fired him. He went away. He got himself together. He came back, and the rest is history. He became the chairman. And he took off, why? Because he understood, or now he understood the power of culture. Your work environment as a leader, man, that's probably one of your number one jobs is to assess your environment like a radar. You smell your environment every single day. And you make sure that your work culture is productive and it's powerful and the people will produce. And the number one element you have to have in that environment is a word called trust. You have to have trust in your culture. You have to have trust and you have to have respect. So now, leader, future leader, listen to me. Gossip is not tolerable. 
Lying is not tolerable in your culture. Backstabbing is not tolerable. Sabotaging another person's work, you have to kill that. You have to destroy that because that destroys the culture and that destroys the peace and the people won't feel safe. And peace has a direct correlation with productivity and in-game profit. That's why America is one of the most prosperous, prosperous countries ever. Why? It's because we protect the peace. Peace. So you lead that. You fight for your corporate culture. I've been speaking. I spoke some places, man, out west. I won't mention names, but we all use their browsers, right? <laughs> and I went out west, and their culture was so amazing. And people were so at ease in the work and the productivity went through the roof. And I spoke for some organizations where the people were scared to talk to me or fear of reprisal of some sort of way. So you guard that. You guard that. You work that. And also, I'm just, someone's just coming to me. Also, you have to be able to create capacity for your environment. Because there's a certain personality that people always wanna grow, people always wanna abound, people always want the next challenge. And if they feel that they're stagnant in their culture, if they feel that, you know what, there's no more room for me to grow here, they will leave for other opportunities. I'm trying to get back on the thing here and you know what, I'm just gonna just flow with it. Leaders are amazing listeners. And, 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 and listening, is, listening is a dying art because there's so much social media out there. People tend to think that communication is connecting and it's not. With so much communication, there's, there's, there's so many illnesses and suicides on the rise. Why? Because there's no connection. There's, there's, there's no connecting with people. And so a leader has to be able, he or she has to be able to sit down, look a person in the eye and give them their undivided attention. There's no texting. There's no looking to the left or to the right. I am listening to whatever you have to say that values that individual leader, that values that person. Listening, if it's for 10 minutes, Every week, you pull the person in the office, you sit them down, you shut off everything, and you just listen, listen to what they have to say. Listen to their concern. It lets them know that they are important. It lets them know that they have value. It lets them know that they have worth. Listening is, is a dying art. But whoever is able to master that skill, it is life-changing for the organization, for the individual, and for the culture. Learn how to listen. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm not supposed to use that. So with that, a, a lot of my struggles came from the fact that I was not a good listener. I had so many goals, I had so many dreams, I had so many ideas. And I just ran with it. I just ran nonstop with it. And you know what? I could, I'll be honest, you know, I didn't get too far because I thought that it was my way. And this is the way that it should be done. This is the way that it should happen. And I struggled a lot. I struggled a lot in leadership. So now I'm just learning how to listen to people, how to value people, understand what motivates that individual. Understand what leads that individual. The leader, a leader gives, the only thing it does is that it gives you the ability to serve more. And when you have your team, when you have your team, and this is going to sound kind of controversial, just bear with me, I'll explain to you why, is that you have to be, I don't want to say the dumbest person in the room, but you need to have a team of people who are smarter than you. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Listen, I'll say it again. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. I have a staff of people who are 
who are geniuses at what they do. I don't have a master's degree. The finance person, she has a master's degree in finances. I don't have a master's degree in finances. I don't even want to count numbers. I'm horrible with numbers. I'm going to be honest with you. The, the other person is, you know, a genius at what they do. My wife has a business degree from Ohio State University, business logistics. I don't have that. I don't want that. So I, I, I constantly, I'm constantly making sure that I am not the smartest person in the room. And that my team, it, it, they're experts in what they do, and I unleash them and allow them to be geniuses. And I share the love. I share the wealth. I share the appreciation. Listen to me now. I share the appreciation. I share the compliments. I share the attaboys. I buy them pizza. I make them all feel like rock stars. Because this world is always tearing them down. When they come to my place, I need to be able to build them up. That. What that's what makes a great leader. So that's you know kind of where I'm at with that. Let's see. Um, oh, and um, building building a succession plan. Yeah. I know you're probably thinking, huh? Yeah, building a plan or building a world that you're not in. In other words, as a leader, and this is where a lot of entrepreneurs, listen, it's where a lot of entrepreneurs miss the mark at, is that they are building this amazing business, but they don't have a succession plan. You need to have one or two people that have the capacity to take your business and run with it. And you build them and you train them like that. Because one day you're going to need the capacity to start other businesses. One day you, you need to have the capacity maybe to you know, spin it off to them. One day you need to have the capacity to rest. So I'm I'm actually looking at this right now. I'm like, man, I need, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, I'm just now in this phase. Like, you know, where's my succession? So don't get to the end like me and look for it. Start it now as a future leader. Start it now. Build your succession plan. Look for people who are able to take the mantle and run. The person that I went to go see in Texas, the other individual ran that company for 30 years. And she just now found a person to take it over in the last two years. And that's who I was meeting with. That should have happened 10 years ago. But that person was unable to because now they're bound by their business. Always build a succession plan which now makes the people that work feel safe er that's that is that is basically the gist of my points here um but i would like to speak to in closing i would like to speak to this whole situation about this this virus Okay. Um, this is probably as you emerge and in going into the work field in the next few years, you're not going to listen. This is probably one of the greatest opportunities in the history of the United States of America. It's not the virus that I'm concerned about. What I'm concerned about is this word I hear over and over in the news media, all networks, this word called pivot. The word pivot means that the current trajectory is no longer available. So they're all mentioning, I've never heard them say this word pivot before. And they're saying it over and over and over again, pivot, you have to pivot. And I'm like, what's going on with this word? And I, then I realized that pivot is associated with a sudden change of direction, which means that there's a paradigm in front of us. The paradigm is COVID and they're telling us to pivot. Now, here's why this is such a huge opportunity because most profit and most profitable companies and startups and industries came as a result of a paradigm. And a lot of major companies, major multi-million billion dollar companies are no longer here in 2020 as the result of a paradigm. 
shift. So you can take this paradigm and you can become a winner's winner. And I'll give you some examples. I gotta give you some examples, right? Just to let you know that I'm not totally crazy, just a little crazy. Let me give you an example. Let's say, uh, let's just take 1990. 1990, the internet was introduced for the first time, the internet. When the internet was introduced for the first time, that moment, that paradigm, that little paradigm shift turned company, turned million dollar companies into billion dollar companies. Yahoo, Amazon, Microsoft, they all jumped on the internet. And at the same time, there were companies that are no longer with us. Companies that H.H. Gregg or, you know, Circuit City, they're gone because of this paradigm. Even the post office, who would have thought? is struggling because of a paradigm. 9-11 was a paradigm. COVID is a paradigm. The airplane was a paradigm. The automobile was a paradigm. Before then, they had horses. Now, no one's riding horses. There's a paradigm shift. COVID is a paradigm shift. And if you know what to look for, and if you know what to prepare for as it evolves, and if you're in the first few phases of that shift, man, you're going to be extremely powerful, and you're going to win on so many levels. My nephew, he's an IT pro guy. Okay, he's he's very good at IT, and he's he was laid off by his job. I said, I said, son, you're a wizard in IT. Everyone's working from home paradigm. I said, if you open up your home computer repair company and advertise to medium and small bit or emerging business or even large businesses, that you'll go to your employers or the employees' houses and fix their computers and networks and make sure that it's safe. I said, son, you will have a, a fleet of people within three years. I said, open up that company. I'll help you. That's a paradigm. And I'm looking at stocks like Zoom is going through the roof. I'm looking at stocks like uh, um, I'm Smart is going through the roof. I'm looking at uh, um, of Netflix it's, and other stocks like real estate and commercial. Gone. Get on the right side of the paradigm. So don't look at this COVID as, you know what, look at how to win because it's still a game and you still have to play the game to win. I can go on for another hour, but I'm not. Are there any, no, I'm just gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna wrap it out right now. Are there any questions that you have? I will answer every single question. Nope, I won't. I don't do politics. <laughs> but anything else out of that? If you have any question at all, I'll answer it. Go for it. I have a question. Go for it. So um, I just want to know, like, from going from high school to college to uh, the NFL, I'm sure that in high school and college you were very well. You were you're very good at what you were doing. How do you deal with the increase of, of competition with every phase that you level up to? Wow, it's a great question. Here, I'm getting this chair for a second. So I was speaking at a college. I'm gonna sit down. Adjust the camera, son. Make sure that's it. All right. So I didn't really get into the laws of winning, but there's a law, and and um, I like to call it the law of separation. So I was speaking at this college in New Jersey, and uh, this. Young lady says, you know, I'm a senior, I'm a senior in marketing and uh, I'm about to graduate in the spring and, you know, she's doing extremely well, you know, and my, what's the, you know, my prospects of, you know, being competitive in that environment. And I said, well, I said, well, how many people are going to graduate in your marketing department next year? She gave me a number. I'll just say 10. I said, okay. You know, let's just say there's 10 people. I said, so how many colleges are in New Jersey? Let's just say there's 100 colleges in the entire state of New Jersey. So there's, you know, let's say 50. There, okay, let's, let's just say 100. So there's, so there's 100 marketing, 10 people from every 
So that's a thousand people right there. I said, so, I said, so let's take 50 states. That's more than a thousand. But let's just take all 50 states and there's colleges. Everyone's coming out with a marketing degree. Plus, the people who didn't get a job last year are going to be competing. Plus, the people who are going to be at next year. And we didn't even mention the foreign students. So how do you compete with that? I said, well, you have to sidestep. So in the NFL, we learn the more you can do. So, you know, we would play offensive tackle or I would play offensive tackle, but I also play on special teams. I also try to long snap. I, because when it comes down to who we're going to keep, who we're going to cut, well, Sean, he, you know, he does long snap and he does special teams. We have to keep him, right? So now with right. you, let's say, why don't you try to pair your skill set, your skill set up with something else that you can do quite well. Now, when they look at the resume, they're like, okay, marketing, marketing, whoa, this person does this and marketing? Well, you know what? I don't have to hire an additional person to do my social media. This person's very proficient in social media. And guess what? It doesn't even have to be two things related to each other. Okay. In fact, the trend is that you get two, two opposite things and you bring them together. Let me give you an example of that. Kinko's and FedEx, printing paper and logistics, they're together. So no, so you expand, when you expand your, you, your, your skill set, you leverage life. And I'm gonna tell you, life is about leverage. Life is about how you're able to leverage what you have or who you are or what you're able to accomplish. It's how to leverage yourself in life. A degree is leverage. Because you can go to monster.com and you can type in your degree and you can pull up jobs in Hawaii. Try that with a high school education. So you leverage up, you 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 learn other skill sets and you distinguish yourself from your competition. Thank you. I have another question about um, how did you became an athlete like that? Like, is it hard for you to be an athlete or it's hard for you and stuff like that? Yeah, it is. It's 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 extremely hard to be an athlete. Um, fortunately, I was blessed with the size uh, and the uh, work ethic, but it's extremely hard. And I will not sit here and say you know, anyone can do it. 002 percent of any athlete makes it to the NFL for one year. It is extremely competitive and it's extremely tough. And it's one of the few entities out there that just gauges pure performance. Uh, 80 to 90 percent of your tenure is how do you perform? That's that man. That's kind of restrictive. It's narrow and it's to the point. Go for it, Sean. How did how did you um, ignite your inner fire when you were at the at the worst point? in your life to get to where you were today, you know, I, I, as far as what, what message can you give everyone that to dig deep inside yourself and get that motivation to, you know, climb that bigger mountain when you reach the top and find a bigger mountain? How did you do that? From what point did you dig within yourself? Right. So when I was, when I went off to that, uh, going into the junior college, the second year, um, Basically, I was able to pull from all the rejection, all the people that had low expectations, and I said, I am going to prove every last one of them wrong, and I'm going to go for it, and I'm going to fight for it. Um, but to be honest, everyone, everyone might not have that, and so I, I want to introduce you to your greatest enemy. Your greatest enemy is you. Your greatest enemy is, is that cap that says, you know what, take it easy. Your greatest enemy is the one that says, or the part of you that says, you know what, it's, you know, it's okay to coast. That's your greatest enemy. And to inoculate that, you need a coach. You need somebody in your life. You need accountability. You need somebody who's going to push you, someone who's going to antagonize you, okay? You need to be around people who are further along than you. That is, that is real talk. You need to have someone in your life to encourage and to push you 
to a higher level, to take you to a higher level. That's the advantage of having other athletes around when you're playing sports because someone's always saying, hey, let's go to the next level. You know, I'm going to push you. Like this morning, I have a friend of mine and uh, he's been trying to get his, his, his book done for two years. And so I'm just gently just antagonizing. You know, every other day I'm texting him. Cannot wait to see that book by Christmas. Boy, it's going to be awesome. I'm just pushing him, pushing him, pushing him. Yeah, so bring people in your life that's going to do that. Bring people in your life that's going to challenge you. Like I said earlier, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. So uh, I had a question, too. I know you talked a lot about winning, winning, winning. Um, talked about it a little bit, but how do you deal with when you feel like you're losing? How do you come up from that? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you come from winning all of a sudden and now you're losing? Now you are not that leader that you were supposed to be and everyone's looking down on you and you know you have that feel, uh, that, that, that feel that like you're not the best anymore. How do you deal with that? And how do you come up from that again? Does, does that make sense? Makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, 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 and that, that is, and I might get in trouble for this, but that is a <laughs> knock. I, I knock Western upbringing and I even knock our educational system because everything has to be win lose. You win or you lose. You win or you lose. And the truth of the matter is, is that losing is a part of winning. And that every failure is not a failure, it's tuition. It's like, okay, this was an expensive lesson. I was a $10,000 lesson, but I learned. What did I learn in this? If you, if you get caught up with the emotion of failing and the rejection of that, then you won't, you won't see the lesson in it. Because you're so focused on failing, 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 uh, or you're so f- afraid of it, you always manifest what you focus on you what you fear but just the fact that you know what you're sitting there and you're running from it you can't run from it you got to run through it so failure is a part of the process do you know the average millionaire google this okay the average millionaire has filed for bankruptcy 3.5 times just google millionaire bankruptcies 3.5 times they don't talk about that you don't i mean think about that for a second wow the first business, probably second business, the third business, <laughs> you know, it's like, what did you learn? See, life is weird. Life gives the test, then it teaches the lesson. But that is congruent with life. Think about this for a second. How did you learn how to ride a bike? You, wrote, you learn how to ride by the bike by falling off the bike. You learn how to walk by falling when you was a kid. Life Give us the test and teach the lesson. Get back on the bike. Yeah. Failure is a part of success. You, you will fail. You know, I mean, man, I mean, if you do some research, you know, you've seen a lot of things Amazon tried that didn't work. A lot of major companies try things that didn't work. You shrug it off and you keep winning. That's why um, that's why in our Western culture we have things like bankruptcies and we so that and other things that you can start over and keep winning and keep fighting. You only lose in this game when you give up. I have a question. Sorry. It's okay, you can go first. Um, so my question is, when was that realization for you that football is what you really wanted to do? Like, it clicked for you, like, if I don't do this, you know, like, I feel like empty. And then how did you stop uh, fear from clouding your judgment? How did you stop yourself from fearing failure and um, just keep pushing forward, I guess? So when I was, you know, I didn't like football growing up. You know, early on, because I'm like, man, you know, I got to run and practice, you know, <laughs> but it, it really clicked for me, junior college and going into um, regular college, you know, it, it just, you know, it just really clicked. And I'm like, man, you know, I love the hit. I love the competition. You know, I just really love the game. Um, I wasn't like, you know, some kids in the eighth grade, like, oh, I love football. I'm going to be a football player forever. I'm going to play football. No, that was not me. That was not me at all. 
<laughs> I need to laugh at those guys, right? But later in life, it kind of just clicked in for me. And I believe the second part of your question, if you could repeat that, because I want to get that right. Yeah, so my second part, the second part of my question was, how did you stop yourself from letting fear basically take over and stop you from achieving your dream? Like, how did you not yeah. let it cloud your judgment? So I mentioned this word a few times. Uh, and and, and uh, 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 it's a word that no one talks about anymore. You know, it, it's it's called courage. It, and I can't speak for everyone, but you know, s sometimes you have to make the decision afraid. Leaders, sometimes you have to lead your group afraid. It happens. <clears throat> you know, and. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of techniques and this and that, but basically it comes down to this. The desire that's on the inside becomes greater than the pressure that's on the outside. It's like, hey, your conviction becomes stronger than the pressure and the adversity around you. And you have to just stand up and you have to have good old fashioned grit and courage. Now, there are some little tools and, you know, mental psychological things like one of the things i that i i used to do when i'm facing the fear and anxiety i would say the word stop just stop and that would kind of it like freezes your brain and then for the next two or three seconds then i'll focus on something else and then redirect that but um or i would speak to the atmosphere i would speak what's going to happen uh, and that's a whole new i don't want to get into all that that's gonna that's kind of super deep but yeah, I would like speak the words out. This is what's going to happen. Um, uh, yeah. So um, one 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 of the techniques I will say, uh, kind of quasi spiritual, is that I'm very selective who I share my visions with, uh, because sometimes you know having naysayers around you can destroy your vision. You have to be careful who you share as a leader. You have to be, which is why leaders. What they'll do is that they'll have an inner circle, maybe two or three people, and they'll share, and then he or she will sell the vision to the inner circle. And then now the inner circle, along with the leader, shares the vision to everyone else. So you have to get a little kindle for the fire. Uh, and then you build agreement and synergy, then you turn it outward. But yeah, it's it's uh, you know, I'm 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 very careful who I share that with. And then when I'm in, you know, there's times that I am scared. It shows up with, for me in what's called procrastination. Uh, it's a, just a form of resistance, another deep topic. But I just go with it. Courage. You got to have courage and understand decloak failure because failure is your friend. Failure is your friend. It's going to teach you. Uh, Sean, I have a question. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for your uh, presentation. And secondly, so in terms, like, you know, how people say they try to uh, develop a five year plan where they see themselves in five years. Uh, do you think that that's there's a fine line between constantly thinking that almost to the point where it's getting you overwhelmed or anxious and you think it should be more focused on the now? Or uh, you think people should prioritize more on the present day as opposed to thinking where you see yourself in five years? I think it's awesome to see yourself at a particular destination in five years, but it's like playing football as, you know, as, you know, an offensive lineman, you know, I see the end zone, you know, I can smell the end zone, but I still got to run to play. So I, I know where I'm going as sort of like a roadmap, but my energy is right here. If your energy is where you're going in five years, and what happens uh, is you can become disillusioned because you're not putting your focus in everything that's in the present. So I see the end zone, but the, um, how should I say this? Uh, the product is in the process. So it's a two-tiered system here. You can see it but you put your energy where you're at in your steps. Uh, I have a question. Okay. Uh, so thank you again for this event. I really learned a lot from this, but as an athlete myself as well, uh, I'm 
I'm a soccer player at Bergen Community College. And yeah. next year when I'm transferring, I'm planning on walking on to whichever school I transfer to. Now, besides of just working hard, obviously working out consistently, what other what other what other advice would you give me to just push and grind? Well, right now, you're talking on about walking on next year? Yeah, when right I transfer now, schools. Right now, I'm talking to the coach of that other team. Right now, I'm understanding their system. I'm understanding their language. I'm understanding their protocol. Um, I'm understanding, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not culture, um, uh, etiquette. I'm understanding their etiquette. Listen, this is just a tip, a general tip. You can run in any circle. If you understand, if you know the language and you know the etiquette, you can run in, in any circle. Um, so much is hidden in language. I mean, think about it. Lawyers, I mean, I think they're still reading stuff and I think it's Latin. I mean, why do they do that? Well, they do that because, you know, they want to, you know, it's their language. A doctor has this 12 syllable word for a code. I mean, think about what's really happening here. It's just language. And if you know the language and you know the etiquette, you can exist in those circles. And so that team has a culture, it has an etiquette, the coaches. Okay, now you're learning, you're seeing what what their practice is like, what their structure in their practice is like, what they're looking for. Are they more of a of a defensive team versus this? What's the weaknesses? Who's graduating? Okay, you know everything about that. So when you step onto that, you're stepping right into the system and you're not a fish out of water. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, well, um, I think I'm done. But what I will say to you guys is thank you. Um, my website is seanharper.org. Uh, do me a selfish favor. Uh, you can go to my Instagram, uh, Sean, S-H-A-W-N, Sean Harper Speaker, and you can like that or follow me. I have some great updates and clips. Um, and I don't know if you have a link to it, but seanharper.co. It gives you a hyperlink to my book, The Winning Edge. It's the entire book, uh, and uh, it's free. It's yours, and that's it. Hey, and if life is a game, as I mentioned earlier, you play the game to win. So I just uh, this is um, this is Al. I, I was the one who introduced uh, you before. I just want to thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart from Bergen Community College and Stevens and Montclair for coming and sharing your vision with us today. Uh, it spoke a lot on uh, on a personal level because I, I definitely believe in your type of leadership, and that's why we had you today. So thank you, uh, and and we definitely will be rewatching this to learn more from you. And uh, I just followed you on Instagram <laughs> already. I got you, and um, I really I really hope to see more of you on uh, you know on, on your clips that you post. And uh, I, I can't say thank you enough. Hey, you know what? Just just do me a favor, anyone listening. Be the blessing to somebody else. Let's, uh, it doesn't come to you if it can't get through you. Help somebody else along in this COVID environment. Help them to win, and the win will find you. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Okay, everybody, massive applause for Sean. That was an amazing presentation from him. Uh, he... yeah. Thank you so much. That was amazing. Beautiful. Second of it. All of you in the room got to witness what kind of a leader Sean is. He basically embodies everything that a big leader is supposed to embody. Trust, confidence, and trust in not only himself, but his team. So since we're a team building as well today, and we also gathered a team for this event, we would like to introduce partners as well for this event because they're a part of are very well knit team and we want them to be um we want you to be exposed to their excellence and to be and to be sure to join them so um Monica, you can go ahead and market your montclair marketing as well um hi everyone can i share my screen does it let me do that or yes, yeah. okay. 
So hi everyone. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone for setting up this event. Um, thank you to Sean Harper for the super inspiring work. My name is Monica. I'm president of the Marketing Club at Montclair State University, and I'm just going to briefly talk about us. Um, so our slogan is shaping business students into marketing professionals. This is our website, by the way. A little bit who we are. We are committed to helping our members learn more, about, learn more, and have discussions about social media marketing. E-commerce trends, advertising, content creation, networking, and also building skills along the way. We aim, we aim to teach members how to market themselves as an individual, which will help substantially in the business world. So this is just an overview of our e-board. It's just the four of us. Um, this is our mission, which is to connect, learn, and create. It's our goal to offer Montclair State University students the opportunity to join an organization through which they can grow both professionally and socially. Um, this is just an overview of some of the events we do, overview of how to join, and feel free to connect with us on social media. And then I'm just gonna play a short video to wrap it up. Um, can you guys see this blue screen over here? Yes, we could um, see it. Yes. Thank yes. you. I'm just gonna play it and then that will wrap my little spiel. Uh, I don't think we can see the video. Is it back? Yeah, too. Or maybe I can like email it to you guys later on. Maybe um, I feel I can do that. But other than that, um, it's pretty much who we are. I'll drop some uh, contact information in the chat. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for having us. Mm -hmm. Sounds good, Monica. Thank you so much for partnering up with us and providing us with excellent content and excellent promotion. So we are very happy and very proud to be holding you as our partners today. Now on, we have our last partner, but certainly the one with the best view and the one that is very close to us and being a business club and being actually a part of the FBLA family. So go ahead, Karan, and introduce your FBLA club from Stevens Institute of Technology. Of course, thank you, Dadra. Um, I wanted to, can I share my screen? You can go ahead. Okay, so thank you for kind of hosting this event, Bergen Community College. Thank you, Dajman, for reaching out to me. My name is Karan Gupta. I'm currently the president of our Future Business Leaders of America, Phi Beta Lambda. I'll go through quickly what our club does, what we do, and yeah, what brings us together. Um, so obviously some of you, a PBL stands for Phi Beta Lambda. We're the largest business student organization in the world, as mentioned before. And what our school particularly does, we do a lot of networking opportunities with different companies. We do resume workshops, LinkedIn workshops, and we have a competitive stock trading competition that goes throughout semester long. And we have different themed workshops based on the current environment. And we are one of the seven schools that are part of the NJ State uh, chapter for PBL, including uh, Bergen Community College. So, um, some fun facts, uh, like very standard, we have over 8,100 8, members, 950 advisors. This is throughout the whole PBL chapters and over 350 chapters in 40 states. So some of the events that we do, we do resume LinkedIn workshops. So we had just had one uh, two, three weeks ago, kind of focus on, on your online presence or LinkedIn presence and kind of putting your best foot forward when you're applying to internships, jobs, and to kind of showcase your abilities and accomplishments. Another event that we really like to do are the internship panels. So we have people and recruiters, sometimes even former interns from the various different companies, banks, talk about their summer internship experience and kind of uh, give their advice on how to approach recruitment. And the final events that we like to do is professor talks, professors from different fields, um, we're mainly in quantitative finance, finance, talk about what's going on in the financial industry and what's going on in the market. But yeah, 
And another big part of our club is that we do a lot of charity events. We pair up um, with communities across Hoboken, Hoboken Charities, since Stevens is in Hoboken. And we form networks with business and community leaders in that area. And we just have a stock portfolio competition throughout the semester where everyone is given $100,000 at the end. You give a cash prize. The point of this is to kind of have a... Uh, to have people re invest responsibly and kind of uh, with the environment right now, pandemic, unemployment rate high, to kind of uh, teach you the basics of investing. This is just um, the next slide. It's basically just how we do it. Um, and th to learn more about us, this is my personal email and this is our link to the duck link, which I can put in the chat. And once again, thank you, Dutchman and Albert, for hosting this wonderful event. And I look forward to working with you sometime in the near future. Thank you, Karan, for the wonderful presentation. So be sure to check both um, Stevens Institute of Technology, FBLA, and Montclair State Marketing Club because they have been amazing partners for us. And as you can see, they, they have amazing materials that you can follow. And as we said, the only way that you can properly succeed in a college or in a university um, situation is if you join these clubs and if you put your heart and soul into it and you will reap the rewards of being a business leader or being an economics leader and making a lot of money and building a, a very big team. And lastly, for us, um, as the facilitators of the event, we encourage you to check us out at the specific link that I sent out in the description below or in the chat below. So we meet every single Thursday from 3.15 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. on this exact same link that I sent to you in the chat. So this is the link that you join in today's meeting slash event with Sean Harper. So if you're interested or whenever you're ready to experience for FBLA content, be sure to check us out. So without further ado, thank you so much and see you on Thursday. Bye, All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you so much for everyone for coming in. If you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them uh, after hearing some this personal story. If, it, if everyone is done, I will we'll hopefully be in contact. I'll see you all soon. Thank you, guys. Thank you, right. Professor. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye, everyone.